squatting, lengthen through the crown of your head. Try to keep your ribcage level, no rounding of shoulders. Shoulders are back and down and nice and soft. Imagine you've got a small peach underneath your chin. As you come into the monkey squat or your imaginary chair, come out of it, pop up onto your toes, shoulder squeeze. So remember your breathing is with your movement, it's called Contrology. True Joseph Pilates word. Um, the thing to remember is that your head will give you bad posture, it will always help, always give you good posture as well. So if your head's in the correct position as you're doing all of the exercises, not dropping the head down, then you're absolutely going to activate the core in its normal way. So as you come up onto your toes, push into the balls of your feet, try to keep your toes facing forwards. You should get a glimpse of your toes in front of your knees as you're doing your squats and your heels should stay down. So if anybody has any problems keeping their heels down on the squat, maybe put your heels on a rolled up mat just to make sure that your heels stay down and then you're going to get the lengthening and the eccentric movement into the calves as well. So once you've done maybe, I would say about 20 of these, I'm going to move on because these videos are going to be quite short, but I want you to do a little bit more on each one, maybe stop the video and do a little bit. So as you come into your squat, it's important not to do a chin poke. You don't want to be lengthening here, as I've told you many, many times, you want to be lengthening at the back of the head. So as you lengthen here, your head is in the correct place, so that you're not shortening the neck extensors, especially if you have neck issues, shoulder issues, if you're doing a lot more cycling, it's important that you're keeping your shoulders nice and flat. So what you're going to do now is arms by your side, chin nodding again, always keep correcting yourself, gentle lean from one side to the other. So you want your ear, your shoulder and your hip all in the same alignment. Try not to move the hips. If you pull your abdominals in and breathe with your movement, then you'll make sure that you're activating your core in a positive way. So any leaning forward or looking down is not going to activate the front and back core evenly. And as you lean from side to side, it's a pinching action across each side of the body. So these are all exercises to prepare your body, but also we're checking is there anything untoward going on. If you've been sitting down a lot more, as we all have, you might just find that you're a little bit tighter around this area because when we sit down a lot, these muscles are overloaded and lengthening and the muscles at the front are shortening and collapsing. So as much as you can, keep these functional movements. The next one is your twist movement. So remember, as you twist, float your thumbs upwards. I want you to move your hips, I want you to move your knees and your ankles. Remember, if you've got any osteoporosis, you minimise your movements. If you've got any disc issues, prolapse, herniated, or any fused joints in your back, you might find that your back will twinge and tell you that it doesn't want to go that far. But just doing these exercises, maybe not even on a day-to-day -day basis, but just 10 minutes of doing these warm-up exercises would be enough to keep you mobile on anybody that suffers from back conditions. I mean, what you can do really is do a few of these every day. If you don't get time or you haven't got the mindset, then, you know, just doing these exercises would probably be enough to stop your back from seizing up. Okay, next one, come into a squat position, just to make sure that the legs are nice and warm, keep your core nice and connected, abdominals pulling in a little bit, but you'll find by doing the heel raises that you'll be starting to warm up a lot more now. So keep your breathing constant, remember breath, movement together. So that means that you're going to have to really concentrate on the breath and the movement. Now as you go, you can start to lift both heels. The knees are bent and as you go up and down with your heels, you may feel a bit of a 
jugger. I don't know if you can see my legs juggering there, but I'm juggering away. Chin nods in, lengthening through the crown of the head. And I'm actually getting quite warm now, so very slowly bring back up to standing and let everybody go, oh my god, I can feel that. Arms by your side. We're going to do a balance exercise, and if you start on your left leg, I tend to work the left side of the body first because the left side is a lot weaker than the right and most people are right-handed. Remember only 11% of the population are right-handed, so that means that us right-handed people are very odd. So I'm just turning around, you will be doing the other leg. What you're wanting to try and do, remember guys, is get that little bit of grateful pain going in the hip. From the side view, chin nods in and you're breathing constantly whilst growing two inches taller. So the more you do on a certain exercise, that's when you're going to get the physiological changes. So as you lift and lower the arm, remember to minimise the movement. So anybody with shoulder issues, you're going to minimise your movement. Try and keep the leg and the toes facing forwards. Otherwise, this is the movement you get. It's a nice fluid movement. A bit like drawing a circle or a figure of eight. It's constant, no stop and no start to the movement. And I can actually feel that going on now. So that grateful pain is kicking in and then you're going to hold and pulse. So you'll feel the grateful pain kicking in a little bit more. Remember any pulsing, I tend to use that little fast breath. So it's a and that's to get the intercostal muscles working a bit more, muscles between the ribs, and of course the ribs and the lungs are attached to each other, so it stimulates a little bit more blood flow and a bit more tissue growth. Always correct your head position, and then gently release. Oh, yes, right in there. Interlace the fingers. Again, with sitting down a lot more, the chest is going to shorten, so we want to keep the chest open, by stepping forwards with one foot, lower the top half of the body while driving your bottom back. Chin nods in and lengthen through the crown of your head. So this shoulder squeeze is to flush out toxins and to get the muscles in the back body connected. And then you're going to feel that mouth stretch down the back of the leg. You'll also feel a bit across the other hip, especially if your hamstrings are tight. And then as you release, you come up to standing. Interlace again. Keep the breath going all the time. And then as you lower, hold it there, making sure that your body is nice and solid up top and you're squeezing your shoulder blades together. So what you don't want to do is let the head drop down because that will overload into the back. And then very slowly release that out. So of course, then we're going on to the other leg. So you're going to lift and lower, checking obviously your right side is easier if you're right handed. Nod your chin in and lengthen through the crown of your head. Remember as you lengthen you're creating that space along the spine. Obviously with sitting down a lot the spine gets shortened, the shoulders get rounded. So we want to try and stay in as much extension with your spine as possible and this is proven to release back tension and help with any back issues. So once you've done a few more on that side, stop the video and do a few more, it's absolutely fine if you feel you can do a little bit more, but once you start to feel the work in and around the hip, then you're going to start to actually do some bone loading for the hip and stop any osteoporosis in its tracks. So what we're going to do now is lift and hold, pulse with a little breath, and then gently release that. Okay, so that's your basic standing work. The other basic work we can do is tight rope position, arms by your side, and then you're going to squeeze your shoulder blades together. I mean, you can use all this as you warm up, so this is what we're doing, using the whole thing as a warm up, and if you can't get past the warm up, that's absolutely fine. You've used your core and you've also used your shoulder stabilizers. 
you've done some extension work for the spine and you've also used every muscle pretty much in your body. So this exercise is good really for the whole body. So any balance work that you do is activating an awful lot of muscle. And girls, what you'll find is if you're doing this near a mirror and you're using your pelvic floor, or maybe your eyebrows are going up and down, boys, well we know what happens with boys when their pelvic floor activates. So boys, I want you to do this in the mirror with nothing on and tell me, does your little man go up and down while your pelvic floor is working? There we are, but please don't video it and post it. I don't want you to see it. They're not nice, really, are the girls? They're not nice to look at. And then once you've done quite a few of those, you can feel the calves working. You can release that out. You can do another one of those scratches, and then you can go into the other side. So squeezing the shoulder blades together. Girls, this is a good one for the triceps. So as you go up and down onto your toes, if you can't keep your balance, you simply take your feet slightly apart. So that's a really good exercise for people that suffer with balance issues, any labyrinthitis or um, issues with dizziness, not necessarily labyrinthitis. And then as you go up and down onto your toes, see I'm losing my balance because I'm not concentrating too much on my posture. So you have to really concentrate. And remember Pilates is really good so a bit of mindfulness training in that you've got to really concentrate on what you're doing and your alignment because I tend to know when people aren't concentrating they lose their uh, alignment and they lose their posture so I know that there's something else going on there and they're not absolutely concentrating. So we'll leave that as the warm up. Like I said if you don't get past the warm up that's not a problem. a device a couple of weeks ago. I think some of you have done it. Be really careful with your backs if you do have any back issues on this one. So we've done the normal warm up and then what I want you to do is gently, not heavily, place your hand on your knees and we're going to activate the lumbar spine. So by tucking the pelvis under and away without rounding the top of the back because we're very, very very flexible here, the background is very easily because of the articulation with the ribs as you know, but here the lumbar spine isn't as movable. And also, as you took under, you're activating a little bit more core. So your hands are light, this is just to keep your back position. Once you've done a few more of those, you will start to feel the legs working as well. So this is obviously after you warm up. So once you've done a few more of those, we're going to come back into standing, okay? So with the feet a little bit wider than hip distance, try not to move the hips. And as you lean from side to side, it's a pinching action across the waist. So chin not in without looking down at the floor, because if you do look down, your head tends to go forward and that loads into this part of the back. You can actually feel how the muscles work differently in a positive way, obviously looking down your head weighs two newborn babies in weight. So if your head goes forwards, then you are loading into the lower back. If you've got lower back issues, you need to exercise these muscles with your back in its optimum position as much as possible. And then you're going to speed that up a little bit and just maybe do four on one side and then do four on the other. So this is level one. So these sessions that I'm doing are for all levels. You know, I think by now, how to make them a little bit harder or easier. So that's your level one. Level two is with your arms crossed over your chest. So remember to reconnect into your spinal extension, so lengthening through the top of the head. So that's your level two. If you don't like it, go back to here. And then level three is where you're going to take the hands behind the ears. Now remember, if your elbows come forward, it rounds the shoulders. So try and keep your chest open as much as possible. So this is activating a little bit more core. Your core attaches onto the back, so we're activating more core at the back position. 
and then what you're going to do is lift each knee in turn. Now, if you bend the knees, it's a little bit harder on the legs. If you stay more upright, I think it's a little bit harder on the balance, which I think you'll find. So from a frontal position, so as you squat, a little bit harder, perhaps try a few of each one. Remember, you want to do this slowly, and then you're activating more core muscle. And then you're going to twist the body towards the knee or towards the side of the room. So twist towards the side of the room. So remember, don't this with the body. It's upright with the body. Squat, twist. So your back is always in that extended position. So once you start to feel that your heart rate has lifted a little bit and you're feeling that your shoulders may be a little bit achy, you can always go across the chest with the arms. Or you can even do it with your arms by your side. As long as you're slightly twisting the upper body as well, as long as the body isn't rounding. Okay, and then a little bit deeper, come on to your legs with your elbow area and then you'll find that you've took under and out now is a little bit harder. So if you are feeling it a little bit too much on the legs, go and have a stretch, come into this position, stretch out the hamstrings, so remember shoulders, shoulders back and down, lengthening through the arms, Letting go of the fingers will activate the shoulders and the triceps. Remember to always do the other side. So a little bit of mindfulness training. It's very good for getting you to forget about anything that's going on, really. I know it's helped me a lot already, guys, I have to say. Um, so coming back into this one, tuck the pelvis under. Light on the arms, don't be heavy, you don't want to be um, heavy on the arms. I tend to call this a holiday, you're not going on holiday. So don't be heavy on the legs with your arms. So tuck the pelvis under, try not to round through the upper back. It's all this lower back movement here that we're wanting to get. Remember that five lumbar vertebra area at the back is the tightest causes all the problems for the legs and the hips and sometimes the knees because everything's connected. Woo, I can feel that now. So, holding it there, um, I'm going to come back onto the mat and I'm going to show you how to do <clears throat> the ab attack or core blindly as a lot of people call it now. So you're coming into this lunge position. So you're on your toes. You can't do it in the calf stretch position that we did with the band, so it's an actual lunge position. And then with your arms by your side, you're going to gently lean to the right. So if it's right leg forward, you lean to the right. So again, it's that side bend, activating a lot more muscle, especially because you're off balance. So anytime you're off balance, you will use your core a bit more. And this is my third session now, and my legs are killing me. What are you doing to me? If you want to make it harder, take the arms across the chest. Remember, you can do it in that position. And then even harder is you can take the hands at the back of your head. But remember, not to bring the arms forward. You stay in that position as much as possible. And then we're going to release that, and then we're going to go on to the other leg. So. Maybe stop the video, do a few more, or just do um, the bare minimum, and you're still going to be doing Pilates, you're still going to be doing some positive work for your body and your core. So with the left leg forward, you lean to the left. The hip flexors are going to be stretching, connecting into the muscles on that lateral side of the leg. Maybe feeling a bit of work into the back of the leg on that standing leg in front. And then from there, that's your easy option. Arms across your chest because the arms are adding weight to the exercise. So changing very slightly the centre of gravity, especially as you lean to the side, taking the head along to the right. Think about pinching action across the waist as you're doing this. 
And then if you want to, you can go to the next level, make sure you're breathing with it, chin nods in, hands by your ears. So you're using the weight of the arms and the shoulders. So this is what we're doing in Pilates, we use the weight of the body in a lot of the exercises that we do. So as you lean to the side, breathing in or breathing out, really doesn't matter as long as you breathe in. And then you gently bring back back together. Okay, so stretches, one basic hamstring stretch and spine stretch if you bend the knees. Guys, you shouldn't do this if you've got osteoporosis. You do the one where you keep the upper body in a horizontal position. But if you want to just stretch out through the back of the legs, you bend the knees to come down, you let the head and the shoulders relax. It's a spine stretch as well as a double hamstring stretch as well. Always make sure that you bend your knees to slowly bring yourself out of it. Okay, so that's just a little bit of work on your ab attack standing. So I'm going to bring you down onto the mat now. Make sure you've got some good cushion in for the knees. So, with the ab attack, you're going to take one leg out to the side. So if you're on your right knee, your right hand goes down, leg out to the side in a parallel position, chin nods in, take the arm over your head, reach with your fingertips and feel that stretch down into the waist and the lats, and then as you slowly come up, you're then going to reach across to the other side. Now of course you can't go as far on this side, so don't be tempted to lean forward, it doesn't matter. It's as if you're trapped between two panes of glass. You can lift the leg as well. If you're out walking a lot more just recently as well, what you might find, guys, is that the little TFL muscle at the top of the hip might just go into uh, a bit of cramp or spasm. If that happens, and I know Tracy, I think you were having a bit of problem with yours at some point doing this, so you can do it with your knees bent in this position. It's absolutely fine. So you're just switching your arms. It's a bit, it's a mermaid basically. We're doing the mermaid position, but you're doing it in a kneeling position, or you're doing it with the leg out to the side. So as you go from side to side, you're now going to hold across to that right side. And then if you can, you take the arm up above your head and your shoulder. If you can look up at the hand, it will make sure that your head's in the correct position rather than looking down. And then if you can, you lift the leg, and then can you lift your fingers as well. So that's your core activating, core stability, and the work is coming from your centre, your powerhouse. Keep breathing as you're doing it. So you might find a bit of a seesaw movement going on there, which is absolutely fine. And then gently release. So just remember with that one, you are activating a lot of um, muscle, the oblique muscles which attach onto the back. I would suggest you have a good stretch before you go on to the other side. So taking the arms, because the muscles have worked in that eccentric position, remember. So when they're contracting and lengthening, that's the hardest phase for the body but that's when you're going to get the most physiological changes and results. Just stretching is different. So having a stretch is to relax the muscles as well. And then we're going to go on to the other side. So on the left knee, right leg out to the side, hands on the floor, correct your posture, chin nods in, hand goes up, lean across, you can look to the direction you're going in if you want to. And then as you lean across to the other side, yep, and my hair's falling out now. So we'll keep going with this because I don't want to stop halfway through. So as you lean from side to side, you'll be feeling a bit of a stretch in and around the waist area. Reach with your fingertips. Remember if you've got um, any TFL, that little muscle at the top of the hip going on, I would either come into kneeling or I would just uh, keep your leg down and not lift the leg as you're doing this. So you want to be stretching through the whole of the side body. So both sides of the body are working together. Your core doesn't activate on one side, 
alone, it activates all the way around. So the TA muscle, which is that big corset of muscle around your waist, is activating. Pelvic floor goes, activating. Inner thighs, glutes, legs are working on this one. And then on the next one, you can hold it there. So the hand goes to the ceiling. It's harder on one side, remember, than the other. And then you're going to balance as much as you can and breathe. Now, this isn't easy. Stick with it for at least eight seconds if you can. Shoulders away from your ears. And then gently raise that. Ooh. Definitely felt that. So one way that you can release the back out now is to take one arm through. Imagine that you've got water in one ear. You're tipping it out of one side. And then as you bring your head down, you're tipping it out to the other side. Again, if you've got osteoporosis, guys, or you've got pain in your back, sharp twinges, disc issues, then you mustn't over-rotate. As you go upwards, if you do want to go a bit further, try to breathe in to go upwards, because that way that you, you're expanding the rib cage and you'll get a little bit more articulation on your spine. And then you're going to do the other side. So the other hand goes forward. It's not a strength exercise, so you don't need your hand below your shoulder. It's a mobility exercise for the spine and the neck. So as you go up, breathe in if you can. If you want to work harder, if you want to try and go a little bit further, you're using the lower arm to try and get you around a little bit further. So this rotation, is an exercise on its own so if you do have any back issues it's a good one to do especially for the lumbar region if it needs a stretch it's getting a stretch here as well as activating the core and then that's the last one okay so remember coming up to standing be very safe make sure that you're coming up and down safely Transitions are just as important as the exercises that you're doing.